Hi everybody, Dr. Anthony Yoon here, America's Holistic Plastic Surgeon, and welcome to Look, Live, and Be Better on Facebook Live. Thank you for coming back uh, this Wednesday. Uh, today, I've got a very interesting topic for you. We're going to talk all about coffee. Now, I love drinking coffee, and I'm sure there's a lot of you out there who love drinking coffee too. So today, we're going to cover all of the good, the bad, and even we're going to talk about butter in your coffee. So have you heard of that kind of popular phenomenon of putting butter in your coffee? Well, today I'm going to talk all about that and give you kind of the history behind it and what's good and maybe kind of bad about it. So let's get started talking today about one of my favorite drinks and probably one of yours, coffee. All right, so what is the good about coffee? Well, there are a lot of good things about coffee, uh, so that's the good news. Coffee is full of antioxidants, and it's probably not a good thing, technically, but coffee is actually the biggest source of antioxidants in the American diet. So people actually get more antioxidants from the coffee they drink than from the fruits and vegetables they eat. Now, it's a kind of twofold. Coffee is filled with antioxidants, so it's a good thing about coffee, but also it's maybe not such a good thing about the state of, of eating in, the, in America today that we're getting more antioxidants from you know, our java than we are getting from fruits and vegetables. Um, so it is good in that it's full of antioxidants. Coffee will actually lower the risk of many diseases. Diseases like Parkinson's, like Alzheimer's, uh, diseases like stroke, uh, different types of dementia, and even liver cancer. So coffee has been shown in many studies to be able to do that. Coffee uh, also, as we all know, typically contains caffeine, and caffeine can have many very positive effects, positive effects on our mental and our physical performance. So as you know, you have a test coming up and you drink a cup of coffee and it energizes you, and there are studies that do show that the caffeine in the coffee and drinking coffee can improve both your mental and your physical performance. And there are people who are uh, very um, uh, uh, good athletes, people who are very intense athletes that actually will have caffeine um, before um, working out. So the good things about coffee. Well, there are also, as I'm sure you realize, some bad things about coffee. So we always have to take the good with the bad, and coffee, like any other type of food and many types of food, has some bad things too. So coffee does increase blood pressure, and this has been shown in many studies to do that. So if you have a history of hypertension, then coffee is probably not a good idea for you. Uh, coffee will also interfere with your sleep. Basically, the caffeine in coffee will interfere with your sleep, and it's kind of interesting. I mean, you know, I'm sure a lot of you eat out for dinner a lot. You know, I enjoy going out for dinner, and it surprises me how many people drink coffee after dinner. If I were to do that, I don't think I'd be able to sleep very well, yet there's so many people that drink coffee after dinner. Um, now, if you're the type of person that has sleep issues, if you have a hard time falling asleep, do not drink coffee at least six to eight hours before going to bed because it can definitely affect uh, how quickly you fall asleep and how well you sleep. Uh, I'm sure you know caffeine will stain your teeth. It stains and it darkens your teeth. Uh, and so that, like tea, does that as well, could actually make you look older by staining your teeth. Now, one simple solution for that, uh, and very inexpensive, is try Crest 3D either wet strips or toothpaste. That actually really, really works to get rid of a lot of those types of surface stains like the ones that coffee creates. So if you're a big coffee drinker and you look in the mirror and you say, you know, my teeth are a little bit more stained than they ever have been, then maybe consider uh, getting that Crest 3D White, and that may help you. Well, the worst thing really about coffee, though, is the crap that we put into it. Whether it's cream, uh, creamers, uh, half and half, um, whole milk or skim milk, uh, sugar, uh, all of these kind of both sugar-free and sugar-added syrups that people put in their coffee, all of this is terrible for you, and it really can negate a lot of the good things about coffee. So definitely, if you're going to have coffee, try not to add all that stuff into it because it takes what could be a very good drink for you and makes it a bad one. And then there's a question about mycotoxins or mold toxins. So what exactly are mold toxins? Well, mycotoxins are basically toxins from mold, and these are present in many, many foods. The two major ones that we see in coffee are okratoxin A and 
aflatoxin B1. And it's basically known that these types of mold toxins will actually grow on coffee beans after they're harvested, but before they're roasted. When they're in storage, they're in a warehouse, they're in a vat, that type of thing, then mold can actually grow on those coffee beans. Well, these mycotoxins or mold toxins can make you feel terrible. Some people are very sensitive to these mold toxins, and after drinking coffee, and this might be you, you may drink coffee, then afterwards kind of get a headache, feel malaise, just feel crummy. Uh, if that's you, then it's possible that you have a sensitivity to the mold or mycotoxins in that coffee. Now, it is true that roasting your coffee will destroy the vast majority of those mycotoxins, and studies show anywhere from 60 to 90% of the mycotoxins are destroyed with roasting. And caffeine will actually inhibit the growth of these mycotoxins. So drinking caffeinated coffee actually uh, is better when you look at mycotoxins than decaf. Decaf does not have that caffeine to inhibit that, the, the growth of, the, of those mold toxins. So knowing this, what is the big question with mycotoxins? What is the big question? Well, the question that we need to answer is, are these small levels of mycotoxins that may be present in your coffee, are these bad for you? Well, the vast majority of scientists and coffee roasters and growers, growers will say that the uh, tiny amounts of mycotoxins probably do not have an effect on you and probably are not something to be all that concerned about. However, if you drink coffee and you feel crummy afterwards, or sometimes you feel crummy and other times you don't, this might be something you want to test yourself for. So test yourself by trying different types of brands of coffee and see how you feel afterwards. You may try a, an inexpensive brand, um, like you know Folgers or something like that, and then compare that to something that's um, maybe a, a small manufacturer where you really know where it's coming from, and see how you feel after drinking that coffee. You also want to source your coffee, and it's the same thing as sourcing, let's say, where your meat comes from. You should definitely try to source where your coffee comes from. There's some people that believe that cheaper types of coffee could be made from cheaper types of beans, and those beans may have a higher risk of having those mycotoxins in them. So source where they come from. Don't buy coffee blends. If you have an issue with mycotoxins, if you drink coffee and sometimes it doesn't make you feel so good, then you may want to try avoiding blends of coffee because then you don't really know where that coffee is coming from. It could be coming from many different growers and who knows which one may have mycotoxins in it. So try to avoid the blends. And probably the most important, even more important than the whole mycotoxin controversy, is buy organic coffee when you can. And the main reason for this is that organic coffee like organic types of fruits and vegetables, is going to have less pesticides on it. Okay, So getting the organic coffee, you'll get less pesticide residues, and in general, you're going to have less reactivity to it, and it's going to be better for you. Well, what about butter in your coffee? So have any of you guys experienced drinking butter in your coffee, and why would somebody do this? Well, this is a phenomenon that I have tried, and I really like it. And first reason why is the taste. And believe it or not, um, blending butter in your coffee can taste really good. It's a whole different experience than, let's say, adding cream or sugar or uh, half and half. You add butter to your coffee, and it's a whole different experience. And I encourage you to at least try it and see what you think. Now, butter contains saturated fats. Now, if you've been watching my Wednesday uh, night programs, uh, Look, Live, and Be Better, uh, a couple weeks ago, we talked all about fat and saturated fat and how some saturated fats actually are arguably not as bad for you as we thought. Well, the thing with butter in your coffee is that the saturated fat in that butter can actually help fill you up, okay? And it will fill you up and not make you as hungry and can fill you up for a couple of hours. The saturated fat will kind of sit in your stomach and will prevent you from being hungry. Also, that saturated fat can also help prevent, let's say, a carb um, crash later on in the morning. And some people believe that the fats uh, in that butter coffee can also help to power your brain. Your brain actually can be powered by the fats, and that can actually help your performance uh, and your mind in the morning. Some people drink uh, butter coffee as part of a ketogenic diet. So for those people who are trying to lose weight, they go on a ketogenic diet. The butter coffee itself, no carbs in that, and can actually help people potentially to lose weight. 
and butter in your coffee can actually help you absorb the fat-soluble antioxidants. Now, interestingly enough, there was a study that showed that putting milk and cream, basically those types of dairy products, um, can actually um, cause the antioxidants in the coffee um, to be blocked from absorbing. Upwards of 28% of those antioxidants can actually bind to the milk proteins and prevent those antioxidants from being absorbed. So it can actually, adding milk to your coffee can make it less healthy for you because you get less of those antioxidants. Well, this isn't the same with butter because it's the milk protein that causes it, uh, not the fat. And so if you drink uh, butter with your coffee, then actually some of the fat-soluble antioxidants may be absorbed even better. Well, butter coffee was started in general uh, by a gentleman named Dave Asprey, and he's a uh, biohacker uh, that I've met, very, very nice guy and very interesting guy with a lot of very fascinating ideas. So years ago, he developed Bulletproof Coffee, and this basically is the recipe. It's one cup of upgraded Bulletproof Coffee. So what is upgraded Bulletproof Coffee? Well, I've got some right here. And the idea behind upgraded coffee beans is that these are lab tested as being mycotoxin free. Okay, now there are other coffee brands that probably that don't have mycotoxins as well or, or so little that you can't really measure it in a lab, but these are specifically lab measured not to have mycotoxins. So you take a cup of Bulletproof coffee and you mix it with one to two tablespoons of grass fed unsalted butter or ghee. And then you add one to two tablespoons of MCT oil. MCT are medium chain triglycerides. And the Bulletproof company makes that and they call it their brain octane. And the idea behind medium chain triglycerides is that they will actually cause your brain to actually function better and it will rev up your metabolism to help you actually potentially lose some weight. So you take these three ingredients, you blend it together, and you drink it up. And it does taste Great. And this is the bulletproof coffee that you may have heard of. This is kind of that whole butter coffee idea by Dave Asprey. And I encourage you, take a look into it. You know, it's definitely something worth checking out if you are a coffee lover. And at the end of this program on the Facebook page, I will have a link to the website if you're interested in learning more about it and maybe trying it. Okay, so there's always good and bad, isn't there? So what's the bad about butter in your coffee? Well, the first thing you want to keep in mind is that butter coffee is not a good substitute for a regular breakfast. Um, it can power you for a couple of hours, um, but long term, this, you don't want to take this as an actual meal in the morning because, yeah, there's good fat in it um, and you can get things in it that can help power you, but there's no fiber, there's minimal protein, you need vitamins, you need minerals, you know, you need a real meal to really get those nutrients to fill you up and to power your body. So it's a good addition, but it's not something that I'd recommend that you long-term have basically just for breakfast. There's also the concerns about saturated fat. Now there's some very respected uh, people, Dave Asprey is one of them, and, and many doctors and you know, many physicians who believe that, that saturated fat isn't nearly as bad for you as we used to think. However, the studies do show that if you have a lot of saturated fat, in a typical Western diet, a diet that is low in omega-3 fatty acids and high in carbohydrates, that saturated fat can be inflammatory. Okay, so um, a little bit of saturated fat may be reasonable, but when you start having a lot of it, then it can be a problem, especially with the types of diets that most of us Americans are unfortunately eating. Uh, and because there's fat in it, you do want to avoid it if you have gallbladder problems, okay, because this could potentiate, potentially cause those to worsen. Well, what about coconut milk and coffee? If this isn't something that you've tried, I encourage you to try a little bit of coconut milk in your coffee and see what you think. So coconut milk is a great alternative to cream and milk. Uh, the fats, it's filled with saturated fats, and those fats can really help make your coffee nice and creamy and give it a bit of a coconut flavor, which a lot of you may like. And coconut milk actually has medium chain triglycerides, like that brain octane uh, that I mentioned earlier with Bulletproof Coffee. And these medium chain triglycerides can really increase your metabolism and help you burn fat. And it looks like somebody just rang our doorbell. Um, and you want to buy the coconut milk without added sugar. Now, I made this mistake myself as I actually once bought coconut milk and it had added sugar to it. So look for the carton and make sure that there's no added sugar in your coconut milk. Okay, so what is my take on coffee? When you put all this together, what is my take on it? Well, coffee is full of antioxidants. 
Uh, so it is a good drink. It is a healthy drink and it is a drink that is anti-aging. So I encourage you in general to drink coffee. Ideally, you always want to choose organic coffee if you can, and ideally avoid one with mycotoxins. And once again, you know, there are many out there. Take a look, Bulletproof Coffee, this is one that's famous for really putting it out there that it's lab tested with no mycotoxins. Okay, so if you can avoid it, definitely want to avoid that. Um, try the Bulletproof Upgraded Coffee like I showed you here. And if you drink a lot of coffee, I ideally would recommend that you drink it black. Okay, a lot of coffee, you don't want to add all this stuff to it and have cup after cup of all these bad, bad things. If you have, however, one cup or less a day and you want to try butter, make sure it is grass-fed. And I think one cup or less a day of butter coffee uh, could be a very reasonable drink and something that really is tasty and maybe worth a try. Make sure it's grass-fed. Like I talked about in my previous um, show where we talked about fat, grass-fed butter is much better for you than butter that's made from corn-fed cows. Uh, and, and take a peek at my old show if you're interested in more about that. And try coconut milk, okay? And, and make sure if you do try coconut milk in your coffee, once again, make sure there's no added sugar to it. So that's the take on coffee. Long term, coffee is good for you, but should not be your only breakfast. It, should be, it could be a part of a healthy breakfast, but not your only breakfast.